Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. If there's one thing I'm well known for, it's my hatred of ships, unless it's my height. That said, there's one thing I'm really excited for, and that is finalizer footage taking on Max Negotiators. First, I want to throw out a huge shout out to all my patrons. You guys are awesome, and you are, well, you're awesome. That's really all I need to say. All of this video footage is provided by my buddy Brosho, so huge shout out to him. I couldn't have done it without you, literally impossible, so <laughs> really appreciate it, and I am super jealous of your seven star finalizer. There will be two fleet battles in this video, and uh, one of them I'm going to be using freeze frame just so I can tell you guys all the different uh, strategies and notes that Bro Show has provided. Most of this analysis is going to honestly just be coming from him. And uh, let's just jump into the fight here, guys. He is facing this number three fleet, which is, you know, 507 uh, K GP, which is pretty hefty. So, uh, you know, not, not dodging any of the really tough teams here. Now immediately after you take a finalizer fleet, you realize that First Order only has four ships, and so you need to take other ships with it. Uh, Cassian's U-Wing is probably the most important, but the main ships that you want to take to start with are the Shuttle and TIE Silencer along with Special Forces TIE Fighter. And Special Forces TIE Fighter is apparently just kind of hot garbage in terms of uh, its overall output. The one really important thing is it does provide passive buffs to potency to the Silencer which is really important. Now, contrary to what my initial thought was with uh, Finalizer countering the Negotiator team, is that he puts the ultimate onto Houndstooth, and that prevents him from gaining turn meter. I thought that it was going to go on Jedi Anakin's Starfighter so that he would stop gaining turn meter, but uh, it, it does make sense. The Houndstooth, really, he needs to be controlled, and that's one really great way of gaining control over him. Now, you know, you're kind of tempted here initially to, you know, you have advantage, you want to do your big shot with silencer but instead you want to stun jedi anakin's starfighter so that he's not doing anything your goal here right now is to make sure that you're going to get his health under 50 percent you need to have him in the yellow somewhere and probably a little bit more than that and that's just so that negotiator ends up using his buffing ability to keep everyone alive rather than his days uh, and that that tricks his ai if skywalker's ship is below 50 percent it's more like below 40 percent now i did freeze frame here as well to show you want to put buff block with the shuttle onto bosk's ship as fast as possible so houndstooth is buff blocked that's great he can't taunt and now the ai has been fooled by our damage front to jedi skywalker's uh u-wing or etta whatever it's called and you know that means that he's got they've got the buff ability so that uh, you can't kill his guys as easily which is great uh, because the next step is you know you, you take him down and it, it, he's immediately revived by uh the buff that he just got and you want to take cassian's u-wing very first for Enforcement. And the reason for that is he comes in, he dispels all buffs, including that stealth that Skywalker had, and he just calls an assist with Silencer, kills Anakin, and then after that, you, uh, I mean, basically, once, once he's dead... Anakin is really the linchpin of pretty much all negotiator fleets. I mean, it's very similar to the Millennium Falcon being the linchpin for home one fleets. Once Lincoln's dead, which is hard to kill, granted, but once it is dead, then you can uh, basically just destroy the rest of the fleet at will. The rest of them aren't anything necessarily too special. So, um, you know, the, the Special Forces TIE Fighter is dead, which is unfortunate because now all of our potency bonuses are gone, but, uh, you know, it, Anakin's gone, and really it's not a huge deal. So, uh, you know, now Brosho said that really what you're trying to do the rest of the fight here is just trying to put, uh, you know, a ability block onto Houndstooth, or you're trying to stun him, and really he's usually the last ship to be killed. 
Now, um, you know, I, I thought that one thing that was interesting here is the next ship to come in isn't another First Order ship. It is the Xanadu Blood, and that's just because Xanadu Blood can call an assist with Silencer, which is actually an old trick that I've used forever using the, you know, with my Thrawn fleet. I always used to, you know, use that combination. It, it's super potent, um, <laughs> pardon the pun, uh, unintentional as it was. Um, and, you know, beyond that, uh, th this fight is over already. Like, the, the level of control that this fleet has is amazing, combined with the huge amount of damage that Silencer can do. That's why Xanadu Bud and Cassian are so good, is because they can call that assist. So, uh, good to go there. Now we're going to watch another fight where things don't go quite as well, uh, which is great, because we want to see all sides of this. All right, so no freeze frames here, uh, same fleet compositions. And you want to put the ultimate from Hux onto uh, Houndstooth, you know, just to control his turn meter gain. And now the goal is to, once again, get Anakin Starfighter down to about 40% health, uh, throw that buff block onto, or rather ability block onto Houndstooth, and uh, you know, now he can't taunt, which is great. The AI was tricked into putting the uh, immunity buff onto the, the team instead of days, which is wonderful. And now, uh, you know, the, the question is, what, what do you want to do with the shuttle? So he, he did give turn meter to Silencer. Which is great because Silencer does so much damage and, you know, it gives him advantage and all of that awesomeness. Um, and now we're just waiting for Cassian to eventually come in. And once Cassian is in, then he's going to dispel that stealth that's on Anakin and he'll call the assist to Silencer. Didn't really need Silencer's input, but he got it anyways and now that's gone. Um, and now, now we're just trying to do cleanup once again. Um, you know, so no choice but to shoot the clone sergeant. Uh, you know, may as well just do the huge hit, though that didn't actually do too much damage. And really, you know, one one issue that I see with this fleet is your entire damage it is going to be coming from Silencer, basically. I mean, you're going to get other, you know, DPS from other places, but it's... It, by and large, that's what you're going to get uh, with Silencer. And so, or rather with this fleet, is Silencer is the linchpin. And if, if Silencer does somehow just go down, then, you know, uh, you're going to struggle. There's not much to this fleet. I mean, it's very similar. Like I was comparing earlier, Han's Millennium Falcon is, uh, you know, the linchpin for that team. Uh, you know, Jedi Skywalkers ship is the linchpin to the uh, negotiator fleet i think the silencer is going to end up being the one the one really strong ship in this fleet so you know we, we all need to look out for that there, <laughs> there's like one overpowered dps uh, on each of these fleets and i'm curious it, what's going to actually happen with the radis if that's actually going to happen or if that's just a necessary component to being able to uh you know be a competitive fleet Radis is just going to be left out. I guess we'll see. So we're just basically cleaning up here. Uh, Houndstooth did go down pretty early this time, um, which is fine. Um, and now we can just put the ultimate on someone else. I'm not convinced that it makes much difference at this point. Uh, you know, things didn't go as ideally, though this is actually still a pretty good result. Now, Brosho did say that he went 7-3 and three on the day using this ship, and, you know, that's pretty good, honestly, considering he's completely new to using it against an established, basically maxed fleet, and, you know, this, this is a pretty pretty good result honestly he said that there's a lot of problems that he's you know a lot of mistakes that he made and you know they're, they're not apparent here but it's it, it's just good to know that this fleet is going to be competitive at least on offense so there you have it folks uh bro show did end up at number two spot and that's just because he had refreshed so many times testing this fleet out he was at the 200 uh, to refresh it, and I don't blame him for not doing it for the last step. So, anyways, once again, huge, huge thank you to Bro Show. Thank you so much for the footage, and to everyone watching, thank you so much for watching. And remember that in all things,
Zerith prevails, even though he only has a four-star finalizer, which is admittedly a problem.